All right, so here we are. Historic Hayward Field on essentially the eve of Junior World Championships about to start. Everybody convening on Eugene, Oregon. How does it feel? How is it now that we're about ready to really kick this thing off? Well, we have um, we've planned for this for the better part of three years. And just like when you're coaching a team, everybody gets ready for the big championship day. And I think we're all ready. You said it takes three years to plan something like this. Um, what all goes into the planning? What, what's the legwork that we don't see uh, leading up to this? Well, the legwork leading into this is about a thousand people who have worked tirelessly as volunteers to really get this going. And whether it's been members of the media, whether it's been our transportation drivers, whether it's been our volunteer coordinators, whether it's been housing, there's so many people that actually contribute to an event like this because uh, you know, when you talk about uh, 1,600 athletes, 250 team leaders, uh, probably 500 of uh, heads of federations, this is a big deal. With all that work that goes into it, how does it feel to have this thing here in Eugene, something you've worked for for a very long time? I think that when you look at the place here, I, I think it's, it's one thing to look at a at an empty stadium. And what makes this place so great is when the people get in the stands and the passion and the excitement and the enthusiasm, uh, that's what's really exciting. Right now, it's kind of like putting the finishing touches on it, getting the timing put together. And when the athletes have uh, tomorrow, Monday, when they put together this piece and they actually have a rehearsal that's when the real thing will set in. I want to go back and talk about the NCAA outdoors. Here just a month ago, and the nation's best college athletes. Uh, what was that like for you to see that event here in Tracktown? I think that what is exciting for me is when I look at an athlete, whether they're from the University of Oregon or Florida or Arkansas, wherever they're from, and um, they win an event and they have an opportunity to jog around the track and our spectators reach forward and slap their hands. Uh, it's very exciting. Of course, it was great that the Ducks won uh, on the men's side and were third on the women's side, and that's a great thing, and watch our coaching staff really feel good about it. Um, so for me, this is just another step in a uh, big line of important things that have happened here at, at Oregon. Do you know this is the first time this event has ever been on U.S. soil so uh, history will be made, and what a, what, there could be no better place than that history made than historic Hayward Field. And what expect, expectations do you have for the event now that it's being held here for the first time on this soil? What do you, what do you hope to see happen? What do you hope to see unfold and, and for fans, spectators, media of the world to take away? I think this place has tremendous history, and it has, I think it represents memories. You know, I talked to a, uh, a gentleman yesterday, <clears throat> the, um, he's one of the coaches from uh, the Bahamas. And he competed here in 1971, it hasn't been back here since 71, and now will come and lead the delegation from the Bahamas. And um, it, it's a draw. People are drawn back here over and over again. It's a different place than, the, uh, than a Paris or a Barcelona. I think what it brings to the table is this authenticity this love affair that uh, this community has had with the sport of track and field and athletics globally. So whether it's Prefontaine or the NCAAs or the World Juniors, it'll be great. Devin Allen, in particular, we won't see him compete here this week, but uh, he was one of those kids that uh, we got to see compete at the NCAA Outdoors. What did, you, uh, what did you see? What were you surprised by? What were you impressed by when you saw Devin run one of the fastest times the meet has ever seen? It's funny because that you bring that, that up because uh, it was one of those things, you know, it's kind of a whirlwind. It's Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays, and here we are Saturday, and it was the opportunity I had the chance to sit back and actually, that was maybe the only event that I actually watched the entire meet. And I was standing right behind us here and watching diagonally across the track, and I saw Devin get this great start, and I said, this guy is going to win it. And I was so excited that he won. I never really glanced at the video board to see what his time was. Then it was just icing on the cake for him to run so fast. They only needed one point at that point to win the NCAA title. He comes across, he finishes first, and, and the men's team ends a drought that spans back decades. What was it like to, 
to see that happen? What, what were you feeling? What were you thinking when you saw that men's team take the podium in first place for the first time in so long? It's, a, it's an exciting opportunity, you know, because I worked so closely with the staff uh, over the course of the last uh, nine years. It was exciting for, for me to see them do such a great job as a coaching staff, and it was special for the athletes that were here, you know, having won as many Pac-12 titles and the women winning as many Pac-12 titles and to come in and win the big thing uh, and, to be in a, and to do it at home. It was fabulous. Take me back to that moment, 2005, when you come into Eugene, you, you, you take over. Uh, what was the state of Oregon track at that point? I think the state of Oregon track and field, really when you, I remember showing up here, I actually remember it pretty, pretty well. And I was, um, I talked about having a press conference and I was out at the gates of Powell Plaza. And I stood and I, I'd actually been here so many times, you know, and, and really had a lot of great experiences here. And then when I walked in the, the gates and it actually dawned on me that, you know, I'm actually, is a pretty important position. The, um, here we're carrying what I believe to be the, the future of the sport of track and field happens at Hayward Field. It's not just the history. I think it's the future of the sport, in particular in this country. And I think we have an opportunity to really do something big, audacious, and that's why we went after the World Juniors. Tell me what that vision was Big picture, what were you thinking when you stepped in into Hayward? Well, if I were going to really define our mission statement, it was pretty clear and it was to create the most dominant track and field program ever assembled in the history of the NCAA and to host the biggest and most exciting events ever staged in the United States. Where is the World Championships and all of that? I'm guessing it's there. I'm guessing it's in the front of your mind that you want it to come here, but when will it come here? The World Championships is a, is a goal that I think that most, country, most countries sees, most cities take a look at. And what's really exciting is the fact that it's never been the United States of America. Uh, and, although, and we have the number one team in the world. And I think we're in, a, we're in a position now where I think that we're gonna demonstrate on the global level that we have the, you know, we're, we're similar to the, the, the Augusta National or, the, or Wimbledon where it's, there's nothing really special about necessarily those cities per se, but what they represent for those people who love golf and who love tennis and who love track and field. I think we we really, um, I think we have a, we have a special place for the sport of uh, track and field, and I think this will be the game changer. Going from the coach stepping back and into a different role, into the AD role, into president of Track Town. Uh, what has that move done for you in terms of in the vision, in terms of molding this program, molding this city into a place to host the biggest competitions? I think I look at it this way. I look at that uh, certainly every part of the coaching of, at the University of Oregon has been, has been exciting and developing the staff and putting the vision together, but I really feel that for it's too big a job to be able to be the coach and also be the person who actually executes. Everybody has great ideas, but the ability to execute on them is another, another story. And I think what we've been able to do is create an opportunity for me to be able to focus my attention on mobilizing what is a community that wants to do this. It's not like it's me. It's the thousands of volunteers. It's the high school coaches. It's the number of tracks that we have in the state. It's the it's the government officials, it's Lane County, it's City of Eugene, City of Springfield. We all need to hold hands and get this thing going if it's really gonna happen. If the World Championships is going to happen, uh, I'm just the person that creates the platform for this to take place. It's all the other people that have to get the work done. At this point in time, today, do you feel accomplished in, in what you set out to do when you first got here? I don't think we're ever uh, completely satisfied. I think we have a, a big vision. I'm a person who likes to think about things long term. Um, and I think I would be remiss if I didn't say the most exciting part of all of this is the fact that you get a guy like, like Phil Knight who is so excited about the sport of track and field and has done so much for the sport in terms of leadership. And it's not just about finance. It's, it's financing. It's about a vision, a 
excitement, motivation. Those are the things that really inspire me. From day one to now, where, how is that sort of, I guess the, the right phrase is that love of the game. How has that changed or how has that evolved and grown? Well, I think the game is, the end game is always the same. Uh, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the pieces of it perhaps change, they evolve. Uh, for me, right now when I wake up in the morning, I'm tired for getting ready for the World Junior Championships. But I can say that in terms of an excitement, a passion, an enthusiasm, and a belief, and where our vision can actually go, I'm absolutely 100% motivated and excited about what's in the future. And when the World Juniors come to a close, when the final medals are handed out, um, what do you hope the community takes away from just those handful of days? I hope that the first time the national anthem is played, whatever country, uh, whatever country's uh, and national anthem is played, that the people in the stands see how important this was, how when they look at this and see the athletes with all the different uniforms and countries represented, that they see just how big this event is on a global scale. And um, my hope is that, and most my biggest hope is that all the athletes who compete here at Historic Hayward Field and the countries that they represent feel as though the memories that have been found at great competition and somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna get second, somebody's gonna get third, somebody's not gonna make the final, but in the end, hopefully everybody's gonna have had a great experience. When I say the word legacy, and I say, what is your legacy? What comes to mind? Yet to be defined. I think that for me, it's not really about any of that. I never really think about what's in this uh, personally. I think for me, if we, can, if we can impact the sport of track and field, in my opinion, the most important sport in the world. Uh, we, this sport of track and field forms the foundation of every other sport in the world. And uh, it's all about speed, it's all about strength, it's all about agility, and every sport is defined by that. And we should have a healthy, uh, we should be able to create a, a healthy platform for these athletes to really, really excel. And for me, that's what's important in a legacy. Do you feel like the work you've done and the work the people that you've worked with has made an impact on the track world? I think the World Junior Championship basically is a standard by which we, we measure that. I think partnering with USA Track and Field and the IAAF has been really exciting. It's been exciting to see three entities work together and as I said, hold hands and really get this thing to happen. Um, but I have to go back every time to talking about the number of people that have impacted this. This is not about me, it's not about one person, uh, it's not about one organization, it's about all of us working together to really do something big and exciting and audacious. Finn, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.